Mario is a gaming franchise that needs zero introduction. With over 49 Super Mario games released since 1985, it's only natural that a plethora of wacky hoaxes and strange mysteries have emerged around the franchise. Welcome to the Super Mario Mysteries, Theories, and Hoaxes iceberg. Uh, let's not waste any time. As you most likely know, an iceberg is a tier list covering entries from better known to lesser known and more creepy entries, kind of. And this iceberg has over 50 entries. It's pretty big. We're gonna be talking about Chai Guy's face, delicious cake, scrupulous Fingor, Super Mario 64 is a Freemasonic initiation, and many more weird mysteries and hoaxes surrounding Mario. Just so we're on the same page, the red entries on the iceberg are theories, the blue ones are mysteries, and the yellow entries are supposed to be cut content. While I was making this video, some entries got added to the iceberg, so I'm gonna be covering some of those too. Look, I just wanna talk about some weird Mario hoaxes, so just sit back, relax, and let's get into it. Hell Valley Sky Trees. Alright, I'm gonna breeze through this. If you're watching this video and somehow you don't know what this is, this is one of the most popular Mario mysteries ever. Hell Valley Sky Trees is an urban legend in Super Mario Galaxy 2. It revolves around these strange figures seen in the background of Shiverburn Galaxy and the Grandmaster Galaxy levels. These large, lanky black creatures with hole-like eyes never move and cannot be interacted with. There are two popular theories regarding their identity. They could be Kodama, tree spirits from Japanese folklore, or less likely skinwalkers from folklore associated with California. There was a guy named Ger Takos who hacked into the game files and discover the texture files for these figures, revealing their names as Hell Valley Sky Tree and Beyond Hell Valley Sky. For a while, it was thought that only three of the Hell Valley Sky Trees existed, but after using hacks, some people were able to figure out that there were actually four. Also, these figures are terrifyingly large. They are way bigger than Mario, with one figure being over a hundred times Mario's height. Additionally, something that is not that well known is that a brief clip in the WarioWare Get It Together trailer features a minigame with a similar looking entity. So that's pretty cool. To this day, their true purpose and meaning remains unknown. SMB3 is a play. This is probably the most well-known Mario theory, though it's not really a theory. Basically, Super Mario Bros. 3 is designed to resemble a stage show. From the game's visuals with the opening curtain, titles suspended in thin air, and platforms bolted to the background. The backgrounds being designed to simulate different locations, like blue and white stripes in World 6 simulating icy environment, and even the introduction of power-up costumes, like the Tanuki suit and frog suit, which further emphasizes the theatrical concept. In 2015, Miyamoto, the creator of Mario, confirmed that Super Mario Bros. 3 was indeed intended to be a play. So, yeah, it's not really a theory. L is real 2401. Again, I'm gonna make this one quick. In Super Mario 64, there is a statue of a power star in the courtyard of Princess Peach's castle. The plaque on the statue has a legible writing, it cannot be read, which became a mystery for many players, leading to various urban legends and theories. The most widespread interpretation of what the plaque says is Alice Real 2401, which led to theories about Luigi's presence in the game. However, an official statement from Nintendo in 1998 explained that the inscription was intentionally meaningless and was placed as a joke by the game programmers. One theory suggested that the number 2401 represented the total number of coins in the game, and collecting all the coins and returning to the statue would unlock Luigi. However, this theory is false as the maximum number of unique coins in the game is 2657. 
Another theory proposed running around the statue or the castle grounds 2,401 times to unlock Luigi, but of course this is also unfounded. And there's a bunch of other theories including time-based unlock methods, the phrase actually being Eternal Star, and connections to Ocarina of Time. It's pretty classic. Ultimately, the true meaning of the plaque's inscription remains a mystery, and the most credible explanation is that it was meant as a joke by the game developers. Luigi did eventually became a playable character in the Nintendo DS remake of Super Mario 64, but rumors about his presence in the original game persisted for many years. I remember being 5 years old and seeing this writing and being so confused. It's a pretty classic mystery. So long, Gay Bowser. One of the most misunderstood phrases in gaming history is Mario's supposed line, So long, gay Bowser. This misinterpretation occurred due to the limitations of the game's audio quality and voice clips. In reality, Mario is saying, So long, King Bowser. So, yeah. Mario Party DS Anti-Piracy Anti-piracy screens have become pretty prominent during recent years. The way an anti-piracy screen works is that if the game discovers that it's been illegally downloaded, it will basically lock itself on a screen and become unplayable. The Mario Party DS anti-piracy screen is an urban legend that emerged around the 2007 game Mario Party DS. It involves a fake anti-piracy screen that supposedly appears when someone illegally obtains a copy of the game. The screen the screen depicts Mario and other characters trapped in a jail cell, accompanied by the ominous message, Piracy is no party, and some unsettling music. This is actually one of the most tame anti-piracy screens out there. It did gain a lot of popularity, leading to more of these anti-piracy screens being created. While this fake anti-piracy screen is pretty good, there are some issues that obviously make you question its authenticity. Legitimate anti-piracy screens are generally not designed to be scary, but rather to deter people from pirating video games. And over the years, portraying these as scary has sort of become a trend. This comment I found basically summarizes the trend, even though it's kind of dead already, but yeah. It's a pretty cool hoax, in my opinion. This is one of the best anti-piracy screens out there. It looks kind of real. Ghost House Face Alright, this one hits close to home. The Ghost House Face is an easter egg and urban legend related to Super Mario 3D Land. In World 4-4, Ghost House, players need to bypass the flagpole at the end of the stage and stand in the specific corner next to the iron fence for 30 seconds. By doing so, a ghostly figure wearing what appears to be a Shy Guy mask will appear in the skybox of the level for a brief period of time before disappearing. The purpose of this figure remains unknown, but some speculate that it it could be related to the cultural belief in Japan that the number 4 is unlucky, similar to how 13 and 666 are considered unlucky in Western culture. In Japanese culture, the number 4 is associated with death, which aligns with the theme of the level being a ghost house in World 4 4. Yeah, as a kid, going to this location to see the Easter egg was always pretty cool. Thanks, Nintendo. Yoshi is Dragonite's evolution. Dragonite evolves into Joshi is a very popular urban legend associated with the Pokemon Red and Blue games. According to this legend, an article in the April 1999 issue of Expert Gamer magazine claimed to reveal a method to make Dragonite evolve into Joshi. The method described in the article was super elaborate and I'm gonna try to summarize it as best as I can. So the method required two players, one with Pokemon Red and the other with Pokemon Blue. Both players would have to complete the entire game and, and capture all 150 Pokemon, excluding Mew. Alternatively, one player with both versions could accomplish this on their own, so... 
Yeah. Anyways, the next step involved trading a Dratini from the red version to the blue version, allowing the blue player to evolve it into a Dragonite and then trade it back. Afterwards, the red player would have to go to the basement of the unknown dungeon, reach the location of Mewtwo, and use a Firestone to evolve Dragonite into Joshi. Yeah, the article also claimed that Joshi would be the sign best Pokemon 999 and the Pokédex. However, the entire method was actually an April Fool's joke. It was not a genuine game feature and there is no way to make Dragonite evolve into Joshi in Pokemon Red and Blue. Surprise, wow. Alright. Marty the Thwomp Marty the Thwomp is a fan-created character from Mario Kart 64. It is a green Thwomp found behind bars in Bowser's castle. The rumors surrounding Marty suggested that it could be unlocked as a playable character by performing specific actions in the game. However, analysis of the game's ROM has shown no evidence of unlockable characters or assets for green Thwomps. And it is likely that Marty was intended as a decorative element rather than a playable character. Also, the name Marty was chosen for its similarity to real playable characters like Mario. You know, them having Mar in their name, making it easy to like edit images related to the rumor. Luigi's Hanging Shadow Okay, this entry's been covered to death already, so... In Luigi's Mansion, there's a glitch where Luigi's shadow can appear like it's hanging from the ceiling instead of being properly aligned with the ground. This glitch is most commonly seen when lightning flashes while Luigi is answering a call in the telephone room, but can also occur in other situations where the camera is zoomed in on Luigi. Alright, so, the glitch is believed to be caused by a lighting engine issue. The position of the light source in the game is dependent on the camera angle, and for example, when the camera is tilted slightly upwards, Luigi's shadow becomes displaced and appears above the ground. Some players misinterpreted the glitch and theorized that Luigi's hanging shadow resembled a body hanging from a noose, leading to speculation about Luigi's death and the game's connection to the afterlife. In the Nintendo 3DS remake of Luigi's Mansion, the glitch was fixed due to the rebuilt lighting system in the game, so that's cool. Shy Guy's Face The true appearance of Shy Guy's face remains a mystery due to their tendency to wear a mask. In a cutscene from Mario Power Tennis, a Shy Guy's mask falls off, causing Luigi to react with fear, implying that there might be something unsettling behind the mask. Various theories have emerged to speculate on the Shy Guy's unmasked face. Some suggest that it resembles the jello-eyed ghost guys from Luigi's Mansion. It kind of makes sense cause, you know, they're called ghost guys. And others believe the mask itself is the Shy Guy's actual face. Another theory proposes that Shy Guys have no face and wear masks to create the illusion of having one, and honestly, I like this one better. You are Mr. Gay. So after Super Mario Galaxy released, a joke started circulating that if you focus on the twinkle effect on each letter of the game's logo, it spells out the message, you are Mr. Gay. Uh, the joke originated on the Neo GAF forums and sparked speculation about whether it was an intentional prank by a Nintendo employee, but most people consider it to be a coincidence rather than an intentional message. Actually, while we're here, this entry right here is referring to that in the sequel, the twinkle effect of appears on the letters U-R-M-I-A-Y, which when reversed spells out the message yeah, I am. Are you? This too is generally considered a coincidence. You can judge for yourself though. Super Mario Galaxy DS Alright, so Super Mario Galaxy DS is an iconic or legend related to the first Super Mario Galaxy. In December 2007, footage that you're seeing right now appeared online claiming to show an alleged DS port of Super Mario Galaxy that could be downloaded. The video claimed that players could obtain this port by collecting every Power Star in the Wii version with both Mario and Luigi and then feeding them to a hungry Luma. It was said that this would let players download the DS version through download play. The supposed DS version was said to have co-op multiplayer with Mario and Luigi as you can see on the video. 
and collecting power stars in it would count for 10 points on the Wii Shop channel. However, it was later revealed that the footage was created by Pablo Belmonte, a known creator of Nintendo-themed hoaxes. Now, if you're wondering why the footage I'm showing is so low quality, well, not only was it uploaded in 2007, but it's actually uploaded on another person's channel. And what this person did is they recorded the video by Pablo El Monte on their 2007 phone to give it like a leak footage at E3 kind of look. They're recording a secret thing that nobody knows about. Pablo, the creator, actually uploaded the high quality version a couple years ago in his own channel. So about Pablo El Monte, this was actually a project he created for some sort of course he was taking where he had to make a video that got 500k views in a specific amount of time. Yeah. He also only got a B plus for something this good on this project. Again, he went on to upload the high quality version of his hoax on his YouTube channel that you're seeing on the screen right now. Super Mario Galaxy DS was just a fabrication and not an actual game, sadly. It's a genuinely good fake though, especially for its time. I remember a lot of people actually believing in this. If you haven't seen this gem of a video, do yourself a favor and go watch it right now on Pablo Belmonte's channel. I'm probably going to make a full-fledged video about this in the future too, so yeah. Wario Apparition Ah, <sighs> alright. So, the Wario Apparition I think is referring to this urban legend associated with Super Mario 64. It is said to be an uncommon anomalous entity that takes the likeness of Wario. The legend became popular because of its reference in Nintendo focused for fun panel at E3 1996. The Wario apparition is described as a floating head that appears in the basement area of the game and chases the player down an endless hall, laughing maniacally and exhibiting aggressive behavior. It used to be speculated that encountering the Wario apparition can lead to stroke-like symptoms and memory loss. The legend is also supported by the existence of an unused track in the game's soundtrack, coupled with voice clips of Wario laughing, which were supposedly unearthed by YouTuber Planet Bobstar. There's some interesting theories that I read about it surrounding the origin and nature of the Wario apparition. One theory suggests that it is a manifestation of the player's subconscious desires to see Wario in Super Mario 64. Another theory said that the Wario apparition was an unfinished boss fight or unused element in the game. There are also claims from individuals who allege to have encountered and even fought the Wario apparition as a boss, but you know, these reports should be taken with skepticism. The Wario apparition legend has garnered attention and became a meme within the Mario 64 community, particularly with the resurgence of interest in the game in 2020, with you know, all the Super Mario 64 icebergs and all that, and like the huge leak. Noki Bay Book the Noki Bay Book, also known as the Secret Book or Hidden Book, is an object found in Super Mario Sunshine. It is located inside a rock formation at the bottom of a bottle and the red coins in a bottle mission. Glitches allow players to clip inside the rocks and view the books, sparking rumors and speculation about its purpose. One theory I saw suggested that the book was part of a scrapped mission where Mario would retrieve it and bring it to the Noki Elder for a shine sprite. However, hacking reveals that the book has no collision and cannot be interacted with, pretty much denying this theory. Another theory connects the book to quotes from Shigeru Miyamoto, suggesting that it represents a doorway to another world and pursuing it would lead to further secrets. However, the actual in-game door cannot be passed through intentionally, so yeah. Side note, there have also been rumors about the book's textures containing a message from Miyamoto telling players that they have no life. But these rumors have been debunked as the textures do not include any text, and it would be uncharacteristic from Miyamoto to say that, so... Yeah. Melty Monster Black Hole. Ah, <sighs> this one. Alright, so I'm pretty sure this entry is referring to that when you go to Melty Monster Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2, 
There's a glitch that allows players to see a massive dark void in the background. This can only happen when players turn the camera around after completing the shimp's bowling challenge and returning to the starting planetoid. This void is actually the background for the bowling lane, which is in the same space as the main galaxy. The developers made a mistake by not hiding the background when the players leave the area, causing the glitch to occur. Baby Rosalina's True Identity The appearance of Baby Rosalina in Mario Kart 8 has caused dissatisfaction among fans due to the differences in her design compared to her depiction in Super Mario Galaxy. One notable difference is her hair color, which changes from platinum blonde as an infant to a more reddish color as a child and then back to platinum blonde as an adult. Additionally, despite meeting the Lumas as a child, Baby Rosalina is shown with a dress adorned with stars, a crown with jewels, and a wand. Fans have speculated that these design inconsistencies indicate a lack of care or an intention to retcon Rosalina's backstory by Nintendo. However, the official reason for the discrepancies remains unknown. Honestly, as a huge Rosalina appreciator, this is pretty dumb. Bowser Jr.'s mother. This could be referring to a couple things. The true identity of Bowser Jr.'s mother in the Mario series has been a pretty big mystery among fans. In Super Mario Sunshine, Bowser Jr. claims that his mother is Princess Peach, though this assertion is later questioned in the game's ending cutscene, where Bowser Jr. says that Peach may not be his real mother, and Bowser does not offer a rebuttal to this. Also, this could be referring to this pretty popular clip in a promotional video for Super Mario Maker and the 30th anniversary of Super Mario Bros. The series creator Shigeru Miyamoto jokingly points to himself when asked about the mystery, implying that he is Bowser Jr.'s mother. However, this is a playful remark, not a serious confirmation. Fans have proposed various theories about Bowser Jr.'s mother. Some speculate that Princess Peach could be his real mother based on the lack of a denial and their interactions in the series. And other rumors suggest Bowser's wife is named Claudia Koopa, but Claudia is a fan creation, so yeah. There is also a theory that Bowser Jr. may not have a mother, as the Mario universe may have different reproductive mechanisms, so yeah, let's move on. Nabbit's Identity Nabbit, a character in the Mario series, has generated a lot of speculation about his true identity. Some theories propose that he is wearing a disguise due to his distinct appearance compared to other rabbit characters. One hypothesis suggests that Nabbit is Bowser Jr. in disguise, citing similarities in their bandanas and appearance in games together. Another theory suggests that Nabbit could be a purple toad, based on his association with a purple toad house. Some fans have also drawn connections between Nabbit and Ravio from Legend of Zelda, although it has been clarified that this resemblance is coincidental. Nabbit's true identity remains unknown. Honestly, I don't get why people are so interested in this, but yeah. SM64DS Scrapped Online Multiplayer I think this entry is referring to these early promotional screenshots and the signs from Super Mario 64 at E3 2004. Some of these promotional images showcase some pretty cool concepts, like for example the four playable characters running in the castle grounds. Interestingly, Wario is shown with long sleeves here. Another image showed all four playable characters flying around the castle in an early promotional screenshot. This is technically possible in multi player if three Joshis wear caps and all four players obtain wings. Finally, there's these pictures of all four characters fighting Bowser and the Shane Chomp and bob -omb Battlefield. On the Bowser one, the timer is on the touchscreen, the health meter has a simpler design, and the health meter and red coin counter are showing even when the player's health is full and they have no red coins. In the Shane Chomp picture, the textures are different, such as the brighter grass and dark dark green rocks seen on the map. Every copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized. No. 
Also, if you made it this far, please subscribe. So while editing the video, I realized I should probably explain because later down in the iceberg, we're gonna be seeing entries that are related to this entry, like Super Mario 64 anomalies that come from personalized copies. So what this entry is referring to is the belief that every copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized. The game apparently changes and adapts to the player in different ways to adhere to their unique desires, playstyle, and skill. This is done through an experimental personalization AI which seems to pull assets from the game and modify them to the player's needs. This was sort of a meme that formed back in 2020 on 4chan, but it quickly became popular and sparked a lot of conspiracy theories. And yeah, people all of a sudden started finding supposed anomalies in the game. Just keep this in mind because we're gonna be coming back to this later. I'm gonna be showing the entry on everything related to it, so yeah. Parallel Universe this entry can get kind of convoluted, so I'm just gonna give a brief breakdown. Parallel universes, or I'm just gonna call them PUs, and vertical PUs are glitched areas in Super Mario 64 where objects can exist outside the game's map. PUs are created by a collision glitch that shortens values, resulting in an infinite grid of imperfect map copies with only floors. Uh, I hope that was a good definition. Normally in a playthrough, you will never be able to access these. PUs start at approximately 65,536 units away from the main map. Also, PUs do not contain level objects such as coins, stars, or enemies, but instead only consist of the base geometry of a level, such as slopes and hills. This is a really basic rundown of the phenomena. You could also talk about how you can actually navigate through PUs, and how some objects and enemies being in these can make the game crash. It gets pretty weird. Scrupulous Fingor Scrupulous Fingor is an alleged enemy that originated from a parody Twitter account called Cut Video Game. On April 23, 2021, this accountant famously tweeted about a supposed cut ghost enemy named Scrupulous Fingor in New Super Mario Bros. The tweet described how developer Shigeru Miyamoto appeared upset when asked about this character. It gained significant attention within the Mario community, leading to the creation of fan art and further speculation. Due to the character's popularity, many fans began to believe that Scrupulous Fingor was a real character in the Mario franchise, and to perpetuate the hoax, Twitter users like Akul Koopa even created a sprite of the character in Super Mario 64, claiming that he was cut from the game and assigning him the phrase, You cannot ignore me forever, Mario. Uh, yeah, this is a joke character. Scribulous Fingor has never been found in any game assets, and he does not exist within the Mario franchise. Overall, it's a really silly hoax, like the whole thing with Miyamoto being visibly upset when the enemy was brought up makes it sound like a dumb creepypasta. It sounded like they were trying to portray Scribulous Fingor as some sort of cursed character or something, but it's a pretty adorable hoax, honestly. If you take a look at the entire Twitter account, it becomes clear pretty fast that it's all just a hoax account. I saw a post that uh, the creator of Scrupulous Fingor made where they said that a Kirby enemy was originally going to have rabies. That is insanely ridiculous. This hoax is very similar to Gumbly or Graggle Simpson and it's funny because they even kind of look alike. He kind of looks like a combination of Gumbly and Rayman. Purple Prizes Purple Prizes is referring to this hoax. In 2005, a deviant art user named King Bowser Koopa posted an image scan of an article titled Purple Prizes. The article suggested that Luigi could be unlocked in Super Mario 64 DS and provided hints for unlocking him. The hints mentioned finding all the stars, becoming the fastest foot racer, and facing a challenge from the Rabbit King for a key. 
Although some sources claim that the article was featured on IGN or Nintendo Power, it was later revealed that the image was an April Fool's joke by the user who posted it. Despite the clarification, the article continued to circulate as if it were genuine, and players attempted various interpretations of the hints to unlock Waluigi in the game. The article included custom 3D models of Waluigi placed in different game locations, suggesting unique abilities for the character, such as springy jumps, and a fast-moving power flower transformation called Warp Speed Waluigi. Alright. Bluegrass Galaxy Bluegrass Galaxy is a rumored location associated with pre-release versions of Super Mario Galaxy 2. The name is actually derived from the bluegrass genre of country music. Stick with me here. The rumors started circulating in the early 2010s and were often linked to footage from the game's E3 2009 reveal trailer or an unused music track in the game's files. The association between Bluegrass Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2's soundtrack is primarily based on the music of the Puzzle Plank Galaxy, which some fans interpreted as having bluegrass elements. However, the official titles for this track in both the English and Japanese versions of the game do not include the term Bluegrass Galaxy. The official title is Puzzle Plank Galaxy in English, and this in Japanese. Although there are unused music tracks in the game's files, some of which have been mistakenly labeled as Bluegrass Galaxy, none of them are actually in a country style or have descriptive file names related to the rumored location. Therefore, the existence of Bluegrass Galaxy as a playable area in SMG 2 remains unconfirmed and likely a product of fan speculation. Waluigi in Super Mario 64 DS We kind of talked about this with the Purple Prices entry. Rumors surrounding the unlockability of Waluigi as a playable character in Super Mario 64 DS emerged due to the absence of Waluigi in the game, which would have completed the thematic set of playable characters, you know, Mario, Luigi, Wario, and Waluigi. Theories and speculations circulated among fans, but it's unknown if Waluigi was ever intended to be included in the actual game. Some theories focused on the presence of a blank door in the princess room. You know, there's the Mario, Luigi, Wario door, and then there's this door. Also catching a purple rabbit as potential methods to unlock Luigi. Other rumors claim that 100% completion of the game or breaking the mysterious box on the file select screen would lead to unlocking the character. These theories also came to light because of all the potential hints towards Luigi being in the game, like color schemes in the game such as the colors using the logo and even the buttons on the title screen. And the article also mentioned purple prices, and that added to the speculation. Ultimately, the truth behind the rumors and the possibility of playing as Waluigi in Super Mario 64 DS remain unknown. Luigi's Mansion Time Limit there was a rumor surrounding Luigi's Mansion that early versions of the game had a time limit to beat or else the mansion would disappear forever with Mario still inside. And this is not true. There is no evidence of such a mechanic or ending sequence in pre-release footage or the game's data. The origin of this rumor is believed to be a misinterpretation of the 90 second timer present in the game's E3 2001 demo. Short playtimes are common in demo stands to allow more people to experience the game, so... Yeah. If you've played in any demo stands, you know what I'm talking about. This misconception may have also been combined with a US commercial that mentioned saving Mario from the supernatural within one night. However, this reference in the commercial was related to the game scenario rather than its actual mechanics. It is worth noting that a similar time limit mechanic is indeed present in Pikmin, another Nintendo GameCube game that was released around the same time as Luigi's Mansion and Japan and North America. Super Mario Maker 2 Extra Styles 
This is referring to some extra styles rumored to be on Super Mario Maker 2. Despite the pluralized label extra game styles in the Super Mario Maker 2 Direct, no additional game styles have been added to the game beyond the initial 5 at launch. It was a popular theory, but the introduction of the SMB2 Mushroom power-up in a later update made a dedicated game style redundant. The possibility of a Super Mario Land game style was also considered but the inclusion of the Super Ball Flower power-up diminished those hopes. Fans also speculated about the addition of another 3D Mario game style, such as Super Mario 64, Super Mario Galaxy, or Super Mario Odyssey, but none of these actually came to fruition. Wet Dry World Mysteries So... This is probably referring to the supposed negative aura surrounding Wet Dry World and an infamous level in Super Mario 64, which has generated theories and reports regarding its emotional aura and potential anomalies within the game. Some players have described the negative emotional aura associated with the level, possibly influenced by its music and appearance. Um, I, I personally never felt this. However, others have reported positive feelings while playing the level, perceiving it as cozy, pleasing, and safe. This discrepancy in experiences has led to speculation that the game's AI modified the level to evoke positive emotions in response to the negative feedback. There's also one theory suggesting that what Dry World serves as a simulation of a human brain, functioning as the brain of the AI in charge of personalization. Allegedly, there is a hidden image of a human brain within the level's assets possibly used as a reference during the AI's creation. However, this texture has not been officially discovered, hinting that it may have been removed from the game prior to release, or was just a hoax. There are reports of anomalies within the level, such as the town segment appearing to be on fire when players reach it without flooding it. The fire reportedly persists even when the village is flooded, potentially due to a lack of specific code to extinguish it. Another anomaly involves accessing a secret city area depicted in the skybox, which allegedly contains models resembling Delfino Plaza's buildings. Players who have accessed this area have reported the negative adding anxiety-inducing aura. Yeah. Also, the depressed Skeeters, this entity that is commonly associated with the negative emotional aura exuded by Wet Dry World. Finally, another anomaly. In certain copies of the game exhibiting coin discoloration, extremely rare dark green coins can spawn in Wet Dry World. And the purpose of these coins remains unclear, with some suggesting that they can either max out the life and coin counters, have no effect, crash the game, or in very rare instances, teleport the player to a beta version of Wet Dry World. Overall, it's a weird feeling level for a lot of people. It never was for me, but I can definitely see why it's, like, considered strange. Fanboy Wario this one's not that interesting in my opinion, so I'll briefly summarize the theory. Wario was initially intended as an anti-Mario. There is a popular fan theory that suggests Wario is secretly an obsessive Mario fan and serves as a commentary on fanboy culture. Some supplementary material suggests that Wario and Mario were childhood friends turned bitter rivals, although this has been disputed. I mean, Wario's defining trait is his obsession with Mario, as seen in his actions and desire to replace Mario, rather than just seek revenge. And apparently, Wario is also driven by a deep craving for Mario's attention and recognition. So yeah, it's just a theory on how Wario is an obsessive fan of Mario. Claudia Koopa We already mentioned this one briefly. Claudia Koopa is an obscure character mentioned in a Nintendo Power UK magazine article. Her brief appearance sparked many fan theories, such as her being the wife of Bowser. However, the writers themselves confirmed that Claudia was an unofficial character, and she was never mentioned in the franchise ever again. Motos Motos is an enemy type that was cut from Super Mario 64. It was discovered in the game's leaked files and resembles a circular, robot-like creature with a blue ball body. 
Motos was intended to chase Mario, grab him, and throw him forward. Variants of Motos, such as Ice Motos and Big Motos, were referenced in the game's source code. The enemy's actual name is unknown, as Motos was just an internal name. And coincidentally, the bully's original internal name was Odos, so there could be a connection there. There's also an unused level called the Motos Factory, where most of the Motos variants would be used, as well as the Motos itself. Eeries. Eeries are ghostly, dinosaur-like enemies that debuted in Super Mario World. They resemble boos and fly in packs, dealing damage on contact. They share similarities with the enemy Rex, featuring spikes, oval-shaped eyes, and a white belly. There's like a fan theory that says that Eeries appear in Mario 64, though I don't think Eeries are in the actual assets, like Blarg for example. According to a legend in personalized copies of Super Mario 64, Eeries can appear with behaviors similar to Boos, often in groups. Unusual phenomena may occur, such as Eeries opening their mouths or larger Eeries potentially containing a special key. They are also visually represented using a modified and recolored version of the unfinished Blarg model due to their similar body shapes, so that's pretty cool. Peach has only been truly captured in the first game. The claim made by a user on Reddit suggests that Super Mario Bros. is the only instance where Bowser truly kidnapped Peach in the real world. According to this theory, Super Mario Bros. 2 is considered a dream sequence with no impact on the real events, while Super Mario Bros. 3 is seen as a play retelling the events of the first game with embellishments. So it technically only happened once, and yeah, it kind of makes sense. Blarg is a character that appears in Super Mario World. He was intended to be used in Super Mario 64, but he never made it out of the beta stage and remained a cut character. While Blarg can be hacked into the game or made to appear using cheat codes, he doesn't naturally appear in the game's files. In Super Mario 64, Blarg's appearance differs from his counterpart in Super Mario World. He is represented by a 3D model that lacks a texture. If Blarg is forced to appear in the game, he will have a red body and teeth. Also, when Blarg is forced into the game, he behaves similarly to his Super Mario World counterpart. He starts by sitting in the lava, and then sinks and rises from it when Mario approaches. And of course, he moves towards Mario, and will cause damage if contact is made. I think the Mario 64 Blarg looks pretty funny, so I like this entry. Paper Mario takes place in a book. Um, I wasn't too sure on what this entry is referring to. The version of this iceberg on icebergsharts.com had this reddit post linked with this entry, and from what I could see, it's just like this person theorizing that all the Paper Mario games take place in the magic book from Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. It's a pretty obscure theory, there's not much to it though. It could also be referring to this other reddit theory, I like this one better, so yeah. Boo Life Cycle and Evolution The origin and nature of the Boo species in the Mario series continues to be debated among fans. There's a lot of theories behind their origin, but no definitive answer has been provided by the game creators. Some theories suggest a connection between Boos and other species like bob or Shy Guys, while others propose that Boos are formed from the spirits of other ghosts or are naturally occurring ghosts themselves. I think the creators have intentionally left room for speculation and interpretation allowing fans to discuss and theorize about the true nature of Boos. Kong Taxon Level I think this entry is referring to the fact that the exact definition of a Kong is unclear and can be interpreted in different ways. It is uncertain if being a Kong is based on a genetic species or simply clan affiliation. Much like the unclear relation between Koopa Troopas and the Koopalings, characters such as Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong appear to be different species but are all considered Kongs. Furthermore, it is unclear whether the gorilla enemies in Super Mario RPG count as Kongs. The same the same applies to Bink, when the original version of Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga resembles a skeletal Kong, Donkey Kong in particular. So nobody knows if they're actually a Kong, so yeah. Jolly Roger Bay Atmosphere 
In the Super Mario 64 level Jolly Roger Bay, there is a noticeable change in the atmosphere after completing the level Plunder in the Sunken Ship. Initially, the level has a dark sky and a blanket of fog over the water. However, once the power star is collected from the mission, the sky becomes bright and the fog disappears permanently, even if the mission is replayed, and you have to start a new file to be able to see the fog again. This change in Jolly Roger Bay's atmosphere is pretty weird because this is the only Super Mario 64 level that has a specific change like this. In later Mario games like Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario Odyssey, levels often undergo environmental changes based on certain milestones, and Jolly Roger Bay's transformation could be seen as a prototype for this concept. The reason behind the specific change triggered by plunder in the sunken ship in Jolly Roger Bay remains unknown. It's a cool detail that adds intrigue to the game, so yeah. Sticker Star Serial Key this one hits close to home. In the Shy Guy Jungle level of Paper Mario's Sticker Store, players can interact with a pile of garbage before clearing it, and among the messages found, there is a serial key. Uh, the purpose of this key is unknown, and there are various theories surrounding its activation. One theory suggests that the serial key may be intended for a specific Nintendo service. However, attempting to input the key in services such as Club Nintendo or Nintendo eShop result in a wrong code message, so no. This entry is super obscure compared to some of these other entries. Pretty much nobody knows about this anomaly. By the way, Sigur Star is a legitimately fun game. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Wet Dry World Skybox is a photograph. Yeah, the Wet Dry World Skybox is actually just a picture of Shibam, which is a town in Jemen. The red building near the top is actually the Mosque of Muhammad Ali in Cairo, Egypt. Before this discovery was made, it was believed to be the hillside town of Casares, Spain, due to the similar building layout. Super Mario Bros. 3 Satanic Um, this entry is pretty vague. I assume this entry is just referring to this old, angry video game nerd video. Good, it's a sin. Yar, mother. Oh my. <laughs> SM64 Sombrero Build the Sombrero build of Super Mario 64 is one of the earliest known builds of the game, likely used for testing on the Ultra 64 hardware. It features different landscaping compared to the final game, with uneven brown ground, three trees, and a simple cloud sky background. In this build, Mario is replaced by a low-poly character wearing a sombrero, and there are three scattered bob on the island. The exact date of this build is unknown, but its significant difference from the final game suggests that it is an early version. It is unclear if this build predates the 1995-729 build, or is the same build with different features. The Sombrero build is often associated with the rumored bob village level, as evidenced by the presence of bob in the build, although no village is actually visible in the screenshots. King bob Child Alright, this entry is referring to the child of Big bob -omb, also known as Prince bob -omb, who is a supposed cut character from Super Mario 64. Although not officially recognized, some players have reported encountering the child of Big bob -omb in their game. It resembles a regular bob -omb, but is slightly smaller and wears an oversized crown similar to his father's. It's pretty cute. Unused Level 37 Unused level 37, also known as file name 37horror2.bin, is a level that was supposedly cut from the final release of Super Mario 64. Despite being referenced in the game's debug level select, it lacks a name and any associated files. The July 25th, 2020 leak provided some information about this unused level, including its file name. However, no model or assets related to the level have been found, leading to speculation that that it may have been lost or possibly never created. 
One theory suggests that the level may have been associated with Hazy Maze Cave, as it shares similarities in naming convention. Hazy Maze Cave is internally referred to as Horror Dungeon, and the leaked files also mention Hazy Maze Cave with the name Horror. It is possible that level 37 was an associated area to Hazy Maze Cave, similar to the Cavern of the Metal Cap. Alternatively, the use of Horror in the file name could indicate a spooky themed level, like Big Boo's Haunt. The Textureless Mario Anomaly is a rare anomaly that can occur in personalized copies or altered ROMs of Super Mario 64. It causes various graphical glitches, including flickering HUD and screen, black objects in the map, and invisible water textures. Interacting with these objects can lead to game freezes, crashes, or error screens. The anomaly has been documented in videos by Swanky Box and Greenio's tapes. Its purpose and origin remains unknown, but speculation suggests it may be a punishment for tampering with the game or an anti-piracy measure. It's pretty weird. Mario keeps Luigi's strength in check. This is a pretty cool theory, so Luigi is often viewed as timid and overshadowed by his brother Mario, but Luigi theoretically possesses hidden powers and abilities that make him more powerful than most believe. In various games such as Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, and especially Super Paper Mario, Luigi's exceptional capabilities are showcased. However, Luigi's main fear is the potential harm he could cause with his powers, leading him to stay close to Mario, who can minimize the damage if needed. Mario is believed to be watching over Luigi, and if Luigi can succeed in his adventures without losing control, it signifies his readiness to become his own person. Yeah, it's a pretty wholesome theory. Silicon Graphics Course I think this entry has a typo and it's actually supposed to say curse instead of course, but I could be wrong. The Silicon Graphics course theory suggests a connection between Silicon Graphics Inc., which is the company involved in the development of Nintendo 64 consoles and Super Mario 64, and their subsequent decline. SGI collaborated with Nintendo in developing the Nintendo 64 console, and Super Mario 64 was created using SGI's computers and this theory speculates that there is a curse associated with Super Mario 64 that led to SGI's downfall. Despite the initial success of the Nintendo 64 and Super Mario 64, SGI experienced a decline in stocks and eventually filed for bankruptcy in 2009, and somehow this complete decline is all related to the release of Super Mario 64, you know, implying the game's like cursed or something. The theory also mentions the connection to the leaked Omen Archive, which contains SGI assets. It suggests that the leak could have potentially led to legal issues for SGI, possibly involving a lawsuit from Nintendo, contributing to the company's economic struggles. Delicious Cake Delicious Cake is an anomalous level in Super Mario 64. It can be accessed through an area resembling Peach's Castle. It's weird because there's only one video documenting this level. By the way, this level is a hoax, if you couldn't tell. So, upon entering the level, players are greeted with a message from Princess Peach, indicating her presence inside the walls and urging Mario to save them from the Koopa King. The level consists of a wooden plane with a large cake model featuring a sherry on top. A ring of coins surrounds the sherry and a star floats above it. The level is devoid of obstacles and objectives except for obtaining the star above the cake. Collecting the star leads to the game crashing, and various anomalous effects can occur afterwards. The level's purpose remains unclear, but it is speculated to have been a part of a beta prologue explaining Mario's journey to Peach's castle. And the final, you know, real version, the message from Peach serves as the introduction for the game, so this is pretty weird. Now if I'm correct, this level is part of a ROM hack for the game, 
It wasn't found in the source code for the game or anything like that, but I mean, you never know. Mario's last name. So, what are Mario and Luigi's last name? Initially, they were commonly associated as the Mario Bros, and were believed to have the last name Mario. However, some sources and statements suggested that they didn't have a last name. In 2015, Miyamoto confirmed that both Mario and Luigi shared the last name Mario, so this solidified the belief that their full names are Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Miyamoto also stated that Link, the protagonist of the Legend of Zelda series, has the last name Link, so Link Link. While these theories are speculative, the official confirmation from Miyamoto established the last name as Mario. So yeah, it's Mario Mario. Super Mario 64 is a Freemasonic initiation. The game begins at this Masonic Hall. There is a checkerboard floor, symbolic of the world of polarized opposites, the physical world on which the ritual is based. There's also a solar disk, red carpet, and the hall is three layers. The coins in this game are actually pentacles. They are the coins from tarot and occult symbolism. In the game, you play the role of a Mercury-type character, traveling into the Earth and between the realms. The thread goes on. It's an extremely long read. If you want to read it and analyze it yourself, go ahead. I'll leave a link in the description. I really don't want to bother. I read most of it, and to be honest, I kind of see it as more of a joke entry, because the reaching on this thread is actually insane. But I mean, that's what makes it interesting, so it's just kind of funny. The Coins or Souls According to a theory discussed on Reddit, when Mario smashes objects or defeats enemies to collect coins in games like Super Mario Bros. 1, he's actually harvesting the souls of innocent toads. This theory stems from the instruction manual of the game, which states that the inhabitants of the Mushroom Kingdom were transformed into bricks. The theory delves into various interpretations of how Mario could be profiting from the souls of the deceased and twisting ways. This theory is kind of stupid, but it's also pretty interesting. I think Game Theory made a video on it, I don't remember. Birthday Toad First of all, the Birthday Toad is a fan creation. The Birthday Toad is a unique NPC found in Super Mario 64, typically replacing a random toad within Princess Peach's castle. It has blue or rainbow spots, and sometimes wears a small party hat. Upon interacting with the Birthday Toad, a countdown begins, lasting for an extended period of time, with some reports of over a year. When the countdown reaches zero, the player is transported to a dark room, where the birthday toad sits at a table. So what happens when the counter hits zero is pretty weird. I'm just gonna read the information I got from the wiki. When the birthday toad's counter hits zero, instead of loading into the castle grounds when selecting a file, the player loads into a dark room. Inside this dark room seems to be a barely illuminated birthday toad sitting at a table. Talking to him prompts him to say, light it up. If the player is to turn around, they would see either a lighter or a candle depending on the copy of the game. Bringing either object to a birthday toad will cause the candles of a birthday cake on the table to suddenly be lit up. Birthday music begins to play as the birthday toad speaks one last time. It's my birthday. Thank you, Mario. I'm so happy. Upon closing the text box, a star will spawn. Grabbing it usually crashes the game, although some have reported that the star takes them to delicious cake. Yeah, this is a pretty cool ROM hack. I'll leave the link to the video in the description, of course. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just kind of creepy, so. Super Mario 64 Big Star Secret so, this is a lost Screamer video recorded in Super Mario 64. The video was uploaded to YouTube on August 15, 2007 by a user who goes by the name of Lotusman17. There's a lot of lore behind the search for the lost video and other stuff, but I'm gonna focus on describing the video itself. The video begins in the starting area of the game, with Mario running into the castle. Many recalled a part of the video taking place in the level Bob-omb battlefield, but after an interview with Lotus, this was not true. 
The entire video took place inside the castle, with the majority of it being inside the courtyard. Several text prompts made with Windows Movie Maker titles would occasionally show up to provide more steps to unlock Luigi in the Elvis Rio 2401 statue in the castle. Many can recall a step to kick a boo. The original uploader recalls a step to run around the fountain a certain amount of times. After a few more minutes worth of steps, a final text prompt shows up saying something along the lines of press A on this wall, which was then followed up with an abrupt cut to the zombie jump scare from the end of the infamous k coffee commercial. Now, Lotus ended up deleting the video in late 2012, and it was supposedly due to the large volume of hate and death threats Lotus had received because of the video. The only surviving footage of the video can be seen in a low-quality reaction video titled Little Brother Getting Scared, Late Reaction, which shows roughly 8 seconds of the start and the last 20 seconds of the video. When it comes to the search for this lost media, there's some interesting videos on YouTube that go into that more. I'll link some of those in the description. It's almost been an hour, so yeah, I, I think I'll leave it here, but yeah. Alright, that was the Mario Hoaxes, Mysteries, and Theories iceberg. It's my longest video yet, it took a while to make, so I will appreciate any support. Um, <clears throat> subscribe. It's, it's free. <laughs> Am I right? Alright guys, I could have added 20 more entries to the iceberg, but this is getting pretty long already, so if you guys want to see a part 2, then let me know in the comments. Alright, bye, see you in the next video.